Good afternoon, my name is Julie and I will be your conference operator today. At this time, I would like to welcome everyone to the Navigate to Advantage Access for Manual Therapy of the Extremities. Thank you, Ms. Grace Richards. You may begin your conference. Thank you. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Grace Richards, and I'm the Marketing Manager for Health Professions at Jones & Bartlett Learning. Today joining me is Rob Hausen, our Education Technology Consultant, and I'm going to go over a few details about the textbook and Navigate2 package, and then I'll turn it over to Rob so that you can see all of the online tools we have for instructors and students within the Navigate2 Advantage Access package. Uh, this text, Manual Therapy of the Extremities, just published in February. Um, authors Eric Seamus and Ari Van Dugen are very uh, popular, popular clinicians and educators. We're happy to have uh, their expertise in this book. We put together a promotional video, which is on the catalog page, and at the end you'll, you'll have a link to that. Uh, the promotional video gives a good overview of the book, shows a few of the videos as a sample. Um, but today we did want to concentrate on the Navigate 2 tools. And with every printed textbook that the students receive, there is an online access code for Navigate 2 Advantage Access, and that will provide all the digital learning tools. And as an instructor, you will have access to uh, instructor tools and settings to assign quizzes and look at automatically graded quizzes in the gradebook within the system. Um, our Navigate 2 digital only package um, is the ebook and online resources, which are half the cost of the textbook and the ebook. Uh, we're pleased to offer that to students who are happy having an ebook and just the digital version. Uh, but we're also pleased to, with every single textbook, offer the ebook included so that students can leave, leave a textbook in their room and take the digital, digital version with them on their iPad or via their laptop. Um, as you'll see shortly, um, the tools within the Navigate package include an ebook, practice activities, uh, different assessments in the assessment center, and a report section for instructors. Uh, this Navigate 2 package includes over 191 videos, and we're really pleased to offer that. Uh, the textbook itself goes over eight different extremity joints, and then there are eight techniques for each of those joints. Uh, so within the text itself, uh, students can read along and see over 350 uh, color photos going along with each technique step by step. Uh, showing patient position, and, uh, clinician position, different uh, tips and information that the student would need to know as a reference. Uh, but we're really pleased to have the videos to go along with it as well. When the student is in the ebook, they'll have access to the videos right within the ebook to click, and a window will pop up showing the videos. There are other uh, study tools that you'll uh, get to see in just a moment some flashcards, practice activities, a glossary. And as mentioned, the assessments that can be assigned by instructors and instructor tools. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Rob Housen. And Rob will begin to show you the Navigate2 to online tool. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Um, again, my name is Rob Housen. I'm an education technology consultant here at Jones & Bartlett. Uh, really, my role is to assist instructors. So as instructors are using our digital technology, our team is available to uh, accommodate them, answer any questions that may arise, functionality, how to best do things uh, if, they're, if the teacher is looking at a hybridized environment or flipping the classroom, things like that. We provide on-demand web-based training similar to what you're going to see today, but obviously if you have your own specific course and you have specific questions, it can be really helpful to be able to spin up a WebEx be on the same quote unquote environment simultaneously and comparing apples to apples. So we're seeing exactly what you're trying to accomplish and how you're trying to accomplish it in real time. 
We also, as an organization, offer a U.S.-based customer support team. That U.S.-based support team is based out of Kansas City, and they're actually more in place for your students. So we ask that if your students have any questions or concerns about how to access material or content or the course structure, that they should first and foremost go to that team. You as an instructor, we would prefer that you come to us, and you can reach us at that email address that you see on the screen, jblsolutions at jblearning.com. We're not averse as a team to speaking with uh, students, but we do spend the bulk of our time interacting with instructors. If a student is causing you pain as an instructor, you can feel free to escalate them up to us and we will work with them to try and resolve that pain. That's our job. Uh, but we do ask that first and foremost, they do check with that customer support group and that you interact with us as an instructor directly. The best bet is to use that alias as we are a traveling team. If you try to get in touch with one of us, we may be sitting on an airplane or an airport somewhere and unable to respond in a timely manner. With Navigate 2, what we've done is created a virtual classroom for you. We've pre-built that, PowerPoints, PDFs, Word documents, flashcards, et cetera. The curriculum is in place in association or in conjunction with, um, it, with the actual text and chapters. That being said, we understand you may want to customize some of our existing content or upload content of your own. And with Navigate 2, we've tried to make that as seamless and easy for you as possible. The way that this works is that with each Navigate 2 textbook, there is a unique access code. That access code unlocks the digital curriculum. It gives the student access to the digital components. They have two options when they redeem their access code. They have the option of open enrollment, which gives them the out-of-the-box solution without any instructor customizations or um, instructor-based, uh, excuse me, instructor-based assessments. The second option is an instructor-led course, which would mean that we build you a course as an instructor, provide you with a six-digit alphanumeric course code that you would then disseminate to your students. The students redeem their access code and then associate their access with their course code. They're placed automatically in your gradebook and roster. And then from that point forward, they simply log in with their username and password and they're placed automatically into their applicable class. All of the material within Navigate 2 is mobile ready. That mobile ready course material means that the students can access the content from a tablet. We also provide an ebook with all Navigate 2 course material. To access the ebook from a mobile device, you do need an app. It's called the Navigate eReader. It's a free app that's available via the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. If you were to go out today to the Apple App Store and try to pull down that eReader, this is what you would find. You could simply download that to your device, and then you would ultimately have a login screen that would allow you to log in to the Navigate 2 tool, specifically the eBook, from your mobile device. I would tell you that that ebook, uh, excuse me, that that e-reader works very well with the ebook from a tablet. It also works quite well from things like smartphones, such as an iPhone or an Android-based phone. I would also, though, in the interest of transparency, tell you that the assessment tool works quite well from a tablet, but does not work well from a phone. So um, while it is something that they could try, we do recommend that taking assessments is something that should be done at a bare minimum from a tablet and in a perfect world from an actual computer, a laptop, or a workstation. So without any further ado, I'm going to just jump over into an actual instance of the course, and we'll start poking around. And there we are. So this is a, uh, a course. Um, a demo course of the Advantage Access for Manual Therapy of the Extremities. What you see in front of you is what we refer to as our lessons pathway. Each of the tabs across the top of the screen will identify the actual pathway. So the lessons pathway contains all of the content associated with an individual chapter. And each of the little boxes here that are referred to as chapters or placards contain the content associated with that given chapter. So chapter one contains all of the learning objectives, ebook, flashcards, practice activity, slides, lecture outlines, and the key image review for chapter one. Same thing with chapter two, so on and so forth with chapter three, and down the road. The learning tools pathway takes the same content that you have available to you in the lessons pathway and organizes it by learning style. So instead of blocking it up into chapter driven placards, we've put the chapters together in um, content or style. So basically the ebooks are all looped together. If I expand them, you can see each of the ebook chapters in one easy to find place. And if we go into the study center, all of the flashcards in one easy to find place, the learning objectives, so on and so forth. Now, 
Uh, this is really helpful. It's meant to be a virtual study center. It's great if a student knows that they're a visual repetitive learner and they know that things like flashcards work well for them. They can come out here and hit the flashcards for a set of chapters for in preparation for a summative exam. For instance, I know I have a quick test coming up on chapters four, five, and six. I can come to the virtual study center here, hit chapter four, then chapter five, then chapter six, all in one easy to find place. The third tab that you see here is referred to as the Teaching Tools tab. The Teaching Tools tab is where you as an instructor have access to the content and material uh, included in our item bank and our preloaded assessments. So here within Test Bank, you'll see we have the Manage Items and the Manage Assessment options. Within Manage Items, you're able to actually create, edit, or delete existing questions that are included with the course content. So in the nine chapters here, I can scroll through and see each of the individual questions that come preloaded. The question is identified, the correct answer is identified in bold and underlined, and you as an instructor have the ability to add additional questions. If I wanted to add questions to the course, I could simply click add and then select what actual question type it is. We currently accommodate 17 different question types. Now you can do the same thing basically within Manage Assessment. You can access the pre-populated assessments that are in place. We've added chapter quizzes, ebook chapter quizzes, and practice activities as well as midterm and final exams. Now if you, for instance, wanted to go in and manipulate a particular item, then we can manipulate the chapter two quiz. And I'm simply going to pull up the edit option to see what's part of this actual quiz and show you how easy it is for you as an instructor to manipulate this information. The first section of the assessment details is some boilerplate information identifying some specifics. In the select items area is where we're really interested. We can see the actual questions, and I'm just going to scroll through them here. It looks like we have a bunch of multiple choice and two labeling questions included in this particular chapter quiz. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and leave those questions there, and I'm going to go through to the messages section. This is the boilerplate message that's received at both the beginning of an assessment and the end of an assessment. This is fully customizable. You can choose to alter that and have it reflect your own personal message to your students. The final tab is the preferences tab, where we've identified the threshold score to pass, whether or not we're allowing students to skip items, where we're allowing backward navigation, if they have to answer all items, um, we've set a timer. And this particular timer is set for two hours. And I'm going to alter that right now. I think that two hours seems a little excessive for the concept of, um, oops, sorry, here we are, uh, for this particular oops, measure here, uh, to set that two hour limitation for a 10, uh, for a 10 question quiz. We can also choose to, again, force the students to answer all the items. This prevents them, again, from being able to only get through eight questions and then hit submit uh, and then have that be their actual submitted answer. It is important to note that if you set a close time on your quiz, if your students reach that close time, it works as a, visual, as a digital proctor. It will X. Um, well, that's not really the right terminology. It will uh, remove the student from the assessment engine at the end of their available window of opportunity. So even though they may have additional quote unquote time left, that digital proctor literally shuts the door. And I'll explain that a little better once we're actually out in the actual course. You can alter the number of attempts, which grade is being posted, either the highest or latest grade. And we can also enable the quiz to, enable, to allow for additional ADA time. This would then utilize the profile setting of an individual student or students who you as an instructor have identified as ADA, and then they would receive additional time to complete this particular assessment. Now I'm going to simply go ahead and click Finish, and we're going to say OK for that Chapter 2 quiz. And wait for that, and there we are. Now, um, that's again within Manage Items and Manage Assessment where you have the ability to configure content. You can again add, edit, or delete existing questions as well as add, edit, or delete existing assessments. If you don't want to use chapter quizzes and you want to create summative tests, multiple chapters can easily be done here from within the Manage Assessments area. So we're going to jump back into our actual course. We're going to scroll up here. And we're going to return to the lesson pathway. And we'll start navigating 
and showing you exactly how you as an instructor can really uh, set the course up to really reflect your personal uh, preferences. Now at the top of the screen, just to the right of center, we have the Turn Editing On button. Once we enable this, it literally turns on the editing icons, or what we refer to as the icon-based navigation. Within each topic placard now at the bottom of it, you'll see that there are a number of simple icons for activities. We can choose to move content. So I can, for instance, move the knee. Maybe I want to teach Chapter 7 in the first section of the class, and I can easily move that here. And that is now moved to Chapter 7 and all of its underlying content to this location. The second icon is uh, the little push pin indicator that allows me to highlight a topic, and it puts a green border around it, which works as a visual identifier for your students to know that that's the focal point for the week. The third icon is the eyeball, which is a hide icon, and obviously if we click it once with, a, with a hidden option, that item would become available or shown to the students. So right now, as you can see, I've moved Chapter 7, I've um, hidden Chapter 1, and I've set Chapter 2 as my focal point. And I'm going to actually uncheck these really quick, and there's one quick thing I want to do. After moving Chapter 7, I like to also refresh the page to make sure the topic numbers line up before I do something things such as set something as my focal point or highlighted area, as well as hiding an item. So I've hidden Chapter 7. And now within Chapter 2, or excuse me, I've hidden Chapter 1. Within Chapter 2 here, within the actual curriculum pieces, you'll see you have similar icons as well. I can move the learning objectives with just a simple drag and drop. You can also consolidate chapters or modulize content. If you wanted to move particularly maybe the shoulder, uh, you want to teach the shoulder in conjunction with the wrist or the elbow, you could consolidate those into one simple placard. It's really up to you as an instructor to configure the material as you see fit. So I can move content around within a placard, and to the right of each placard piece or curriculum item, we have an edit option. So edit settings allows you to get at the granular specifics. You can change a topic uh, or a curriculum piece's name as well as its description. You can also move it along the horizontal. You can hide it in its entirety from your students, or you can choose to delete it. So what I'm going to do here within Chapter 2, I'm just going to ex expand the uh, edit settings, and I'm going to choose to hide the learning objectives. And you'll see now, instead of being displayed in blue, they're grayed out. I'm going to do the same thing with the slides. I'm going to hide those. And then we're also going to hide the lecture outlines. So now the learning objectives, the slides, and the lecture outlines have been hidden from my students in this particular Chapter 2 placard. And as I minimize or collapse the placard again, I can scroll down on the left-hand side and select the Switch Role To option. And this allows me to toggle back and forth between a student and an instructor role. Now, as soon as I click this over to the student role, you'll note that my particular options have changed. I've lost my teaching tools pathway. I've lost the right to turn editing on. You'll also note that it still shows Chapter 7 has been moved, Chapter 1 is hidden, Chapter 2 is my highlighted or current topic. And within the Chapter 2 placard, the learning objectives, lecture outlines, and PowerPoint slides are now hidden from the students. I can choose to reveal those as I see fit as an instructor. Now, very easily, I can toggle back into an instructor role by simply going back to switch role two, returning to my normal role, and then simply turning editing, editing on once again to provide me with my icon-based navigation. Now, within the actual shoulder section here, I'm going to show you this fourth icon, which is the Add an Activity component. And this will walk you through how easy it is to add items such as an activity or a resource. Now, an activity is something that's assignable and gradable, which means it can show up in the gradebook, while a resource is something you just want to share with your students. And uh, within the actual resource section, we have one very familiar option, which is page. And this is highly utilized by instructors to make things like videos available to their students in a hybrid or flipped classroom. So I'm going to simply click Add. And I'm going to walk you through how simple it is to add an actual video directly into the course. And I'm just going to add the word video. And we're going to use shoulder labrum tear. And under description, I'm just going to add the word video. I'm going to scroll down here, and under content, I'm going to click the button that says show more options, and this gives me the HTML option. I'm just going to click the little button that has the greater than and less than symbol to enable the HTML component. And now I'm going to go up into another browser. I'm going to go up to YouTube, and I'm going to simply search
for a video out on YouTube that for the content I'm looking for, so, so a video on a torn labrum surgery. So here we have, uh, yeah, well, here's a very good one here, label repair, let's get the doctor's name. This looks to be an actual, um, Use this one here. This looks to be more of an actual animation. So I'm going to click on this shoulder label, label repair, excuse me. And this works well for what I'm looking to share. And this, this is a nice little animation I want to include. I can simply come down, click share, and then I click embed. And that and reveals to me the actual HTML. And I'm going to copy this content in its entirety, the HTML link here. I'm going to go back into the course and I'm going to paste that content directly here so that it will be displayed in the frame of the course. I scroll down and I say save and return to course. And just like that, I've added that video within my Chapter 2 shoulder class. I click on the video and that will launch here within the frame of the course. Now the great thing about this is that the student won't be subjected to any advertisements because we've grabbed the actual HTML or banner messages that might appear. They're also not exposed to what I would refer to as the slippery slope on the right side here where they can start to watch videos and get taken off task. By embedding that video directly within the frame of the course, the student is fine tuning and focusing their attention on the area that you as an instructor has deemed the most important or focal point. So that's how easy it is for you to go through the process of literally adding that piece, adding that video here to basically flip your classroom. So I'm going to return to the lessons pathway. I'm going to scroll down here within Chapter 2 again. And next I'm going to show you another, and another resource that you might be interested in, and that's the ability to add a link to a URL. So if I go out, for instance, and watch Google, we have available for, let's see, RS Pro Surgery. Do this one here. <laughs> Association. There we go. So here's the Arthroscopy Association of North America, and here on the actual web page. What I'm going to do is just show you how easy it is as you start to navigate around. There's a physician education section. Let's look at techniques. And that page is loading a little slowly here. And perhaps there's a current issue that we're interested in or something in the most viewed or a published issue. And if you were trying to direct a student out to this area, it might be difficult to understand or explain to them, okay, what I really want you to do is so we're going to go here to shoulder instability, and then we're going to grab this section right here, that actual URL. So now instead of having direct your students that they come out to the arthroscopy techniques and then .org and then shoulder and then channel, and we're literally going to just come in, take that information, hit URL, and add. And then here under description, uh, for brevity, I'm just going to put the word whoop, video. Actually, that's a lie. I'm going to put the word link. <laughs> and then I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to just paste that link right here. And under automatic uh, display section, I'm going to actually change this to embed, which is a personal preference. You, you can see you have a number of options there. I choose embed because I like to keep the material in the frame of the course. And I simply say save and return to course. And now, We've taken that information and, again, added that link right here into our course. You can see that it expands within the frame of the course. This is the full functioning website, but it automatically takes us to these shoulder videos. Now, if I wanted to navigate to something regarding the knee and specifically to an ACL, I can very easily click and it brings me to that section. Now, the first time every student clicks it, or from that time, every time they click it from that point after, it will automatically bring them to the shoulder section. But from there, they are able to navigate around throughout this website in its entirety. But it is a great way for you as an instructor to, again, fine tune the material that you're providing to your students via digital access. So now within Chapter 2, we've added the video as well as the link to the arthroscopic surgery section. And now I'm going to add an actual activity, and the activity we're going to add is an actual quiz. 
So I'm going to scroll down here under activity and select where it says quiz. And I'm going to select add. And I'm going to change, I'm going to give this a quiz name and we're just going to call this the quiz for chapter two. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to set my review options, which are making, uh, or, or excuse me, setting the variable for when your students will be able to see their responses and answers. By default, they get a score as soon as they complete the quiz, but here is where you define when they'll be able to see the correct answers and the incorrect responses that they've made. They can set to be immediately after the attempt or after the quiz is closed. We're going to set it to after the quiz is closed. We're going to select our pre-populated Chapter 2 quiz, and then we're going to scroll down here under Restrict Access, and this is where we would actually set a restriction. Now you can set restrictions at the granular curriculum level for quizzes, for ebooks, for learning activities, objectives, past, uh, excuse me, flashcards, all of those. You can also set it at the chapter level. And you can set restrictions based on date, grade, user profile, or restriction set. In short, you could set this up so that this particular component, this quiz, wasn't available until say March 28th until March 31st. Uh, you needed to have a grade of 80% or higher on the preceding chapter quiz. Your last name needs to be Richards. And um, you know once you take this quiz or have access to the quiz, only those particular people who meet those filtering criteria would be able to have access to it. So I'm going to go ahead and just set one here for date. And I'm going to change the date here. I'm going to make this available again from the 28th. We're going to make it available from 1,800 hours. And then we're going to add a secondary restriction, again, based on date. And we're going to change this again to the 28th. And we're going to make it available to 2,200 hours. So we're giving them a four-hour window of opportunity. We just have to change the from to an until. Now, that works as, again, a digital proctor. This is the window of opportunity. So the student can't get in until 1,800 hours on the 28th, and at 2,200 hours on the 28th, it's as if the proctor said pencil down, collected the blue book, and ushered them out of the room. I simply say save and return to course, and just like that, we've now added the Chapter 2 quiz here. Now, outside of our restrictions, we're logged in currently as an instructor, so while this quiz is currently grayed out to the students, it is available to me as an instructor, so I'm going to go ahead and launch this. And we're going to go ahead and start it. And I'm just going to literally power through these questions. Um, there'll be no real logic used. I'm actually just going to answer B for every question. Uh, or maybe I'm not. So <laughs> this actually has a labeling component to it, so I'm going to need to label these pieces. One, and this is one of the reasons why we say that trying to take an assessment from an actual uh, iPhone or a, or a phone of any kind might be difficult, and we do recommend you do this at least from a tablet, uh, preferably from a computer such as a laptop or a workstation. There we are. And that's all of our 10 questions, and I will submit my assessment, and I'll say yes, telling you my score of 30%. So I got three questions right out of the 10 questions. Now, if I were an actual student in the course and I were within the window of opportunity, once I click close, I would not be able to remediate and see which questions I got right and which questions I got wrong until 10.01 p.m. On the, on the 28th of March. So that's how easy it is for you as an instructor to literally assign those quizzes. Again, we've pre-populated them. They're there for you. You don't have to create them. You simply define when, where, and how your students will gain access to them. So now that we've gone ahead, we've added a video, we've added a link, we've also gone ahead and added a quiz, I'd like to take you through the ebook. Now, the ebook for this title is pretty robust. It has an overwhelming number of videos in it per chapter. And I'm going to just open up chapter two here really briefly, and we'll start to poke around. This is going to give you the annotation ink icon info, so it's going to identify any icons that you might see as we're navigating through. I'm going to actually explain them as we work through the course and work through the chapter. And I'm literally just going to arrow through. You can see here. 
that there are assessments. This is the Chapter 2 ebook quiz. There is an ebook quiz associated with each chapter. That quiz reports automatically in the gradebook. In Chapter 1 of this particular title, there are also knowledge checks. Those knowledge checks are just meant to be a practice area for students. They do not report into the gradebook. Uh, it's meant to be a judgment-free area for the student to demonstrate their comprehension of that material. But that's only for Chapter 1. All of the remaining chapters in this particular title have an ebook quiz, and that ebook quiz does report into the gradebook. And as we go through, in addition to the quizzing, you'll also find there are links. And all of the items that you see in the margins that are circular icons, that's publisher-provided content. So here we have some videos, and I'll go ahead and launch this one. And this one's going to walk through shoulder general limitation. And I'll let this one play out. That little 21 second video and demonstrating how that actual shoulder limitation can be assessed. Now, we'll also go to the very next page. Again, videos littered throughout the text found in the margins. The user also has the ability from the right hand side to add their own notations. Now, this message is coming up because it's important to note while a user can do this, so the student individually, can make notations. You as an instructor using our Manage Groups feature can also make notations, audio notes, page references, web links, highlights, and push those out to the students in your class to their version of the ebook. And you do that using the Manage Groups feature. That message that we saw there, that warning message was conveying that if you don't create a group and try to push those out, you need to create the group first, then add the annotations. That way, when we create a child instance of your course in the future, that group and all of its customizations will carry forward into that child version of the course. But you can see here, I can put a note. And I've added that note as a user for myself. You'll note that that actual icon appears as a, as a teardrop instead of a circle because it's user added instead of publisher provided. We can do the same thing with an audio note up to three minutes a piece. An instructor can also do this so that your students would have audio notes in certain areas of the book where you can explain things in your own terminology. We can add a web link. So here we can add the, we're just going to paste the link from earlier, and we'll say shoulder instability link, and we'll go ahead and add that, and now that shows up as well. We can also add a page link. So here we are on page number 38, and using the chain link icon here, I'm going to shift this over to page 15. I'm going to add a label. I'm just going to put that, actually, I'm going to call that a cross-reference. And then I can also expand the page out to be full screen. I can change the layout from two page to one page or one page to two. There is a zoom feature that allows you to zoom in and out. And I'll just zoom back out for us. You can hide all of the annotations that have been made and just read from the textbook. I apologize, my, my mouse keyboard is acting up a little bit. There we are. There we are. And you can also draw with a pen. Uh, there's also a highlighter available in five different colors. So you can highlight a particular section just as you would in a physical textbook, but with the ebook. You can simply save all of those annotations and all of those customizations, and those would be made available for you as a student or an instructor down the road later on in the course. Also, if you've used the Manage Groups feature, you as an instructor, when you save those to a group specifically, those customizations will be available in the next iteration or version of the course. So now I can scroll over here to the resources option, which is the note with the little musical, excuse me, the icon with the little musical note in the celluloid film. I click on this and it will show me the actual components that are media or publisher provided content in the course. These green items are the knowledge checks I spoke of for Chapter 1. There's a Chapter 1 ebook quiz, excuse me, and then we get into some of the actual videos that are included, as well as the abstracts that are automatically linked, videos that are included. Now, these are all linked automatically, so if I, as a user, come to this and I wanted to see the heightened flexor, I can go right to that page, and here it is blinking. 
and I just need to change my cursor. I apologize, I'm still on the highlighter. And this will launch and take me directly out to that abstract. Return to the actual book. And again to the resources section, the first tab is again the media, so it's showing you all the publisher provided content. The second tab is the My Stuff area, so this is all the user added. So these are the four items that we added earlier today. If I click on any one of them, it's going to take me right to that page. Here are our teardrop shaped icons already in place as well as our highlights. And this is again a great way for a student, as you can imagine, if they've been taking notes in the ebook throughout the term, they could filter out all of those notes and then start reading through them and linking directly to those pages in preparation for a major exam or summative. Now, the great news is, is that everything I've shown you here today, again, is available from the actual uh, from the actual ebook. But we're also capturing that student's engagement, and I'd also like to point out your student's engagement in the ebook from the Navigate e-reader. When the student first downloads or has access, I should say, to the book from the e-reader, we provide them with what's referred to as online access. So they're in the book connected with a Wi-Fi connection, and then they're given the option of actually downloading that text. And you can download the text in its entirety to your local device, which means you can work with it offline. We do not push out the interactive elements directly onto that device because we want you as an instructor or a user specifically a student or an instructor, to define which of those components they want to have available to themselves offline. If I pushed all of those videos directly onto your phone without your approval, you wouldn't be very happy with me. I'd likely gobble up all the space on the device. So what we do is we give you as the, as the user an a la carte menu you can choose from to discern which of those downloadable components you'd like to have access to while offline. If you do have components offline or you're just reading the ebook offline, we're capturing that engagement and we're reporting it back to the first of our dashboard analytic reports, which is referred to as our ebook usage report. And what I'm going to do now is just come up here to the top right hand corner and go into reports and grades and show you the actual ebook usage report. Now, this is an actual demonstration course. It just has some dummy students in it. Uh, and now I'm just going to spin up this report. It's going to, by default, show me the most recent 30 days. You do have the ability to edit that date range. Uh, the most recent 30 days was the default because we find that that's going to be the most helpful, we think, for an instructor to give them a snapshot in time of how their students are using this material. And we're going to just wait for this. And this is running a little slower than normal because of the actual WebEx that we're on. And hopefully this will load up pretty quick and we'll walk you through that ebook usage report. Now in the interim, I'll just hobble back over here into the course and walk you through some of the gradebook actual components. So the actual gradebook appears here. All of the students in this particular course automatically added to the gradebook when they redeemed their access code and associated themselves with the course ID. So we can see here that of these students, they've all taken the Chapter 2 ebook quiz. Um, looks like Gus here has also taken the Chapter 3 and Chapter 1 ebook quiz. He's not doing well on either one, um, as well as Chapter 4 and 5, it looks like. Um, it will scroll forward a little bit. And here we can also see, here's the quiz for Chapter 2 that we just added. That automatically appears in the gradebook. You do have the ability to set up weighted graded categories whereby you can say, for instance, that your chapter quizzes are worth 40% of the course total grade, um, maybe the ebook quizzes are worth 10%, and the final exam is worth the remaining 50% of the grade. All of that weighted grading category component and weighted grading rubrics is something that if you are interested in setting it up, we just suggest that you reach out to us. We can walk you through it and make sure that the math is in line with what you're expecting. Now, I'm going to just scroll back over, and I'm going to just jump back over into the report. The report is populated. Here is our ebook usage report. We can see that Chapter 2 is by far our most popular chapter. Chapter 5 is then next, then Chapter 6. And on the least popular side, we see that the least popular chapter is Chapter 8. Performance-wise, we can see that a number of quizzes have been taken. And again, this is dummy data just populated by members of our staff going out and poking around as those different student users. We can see the average grade for Chapter 2, Chapter 3 for the class as a whole is 40%. We'll scroll down here into class engagement. 
and we can see the number of resources viewed and hours spent by the class in each chapter. So chapter two is get the most time. They've spent uh, well over an hour and a half as a class. The number of resources viewed is 54 for that particular chapter, and the number of annotations made is 11. So 11 annotations have been made by the class in that particular chapter in the ebook. I can see who my best and worst performers are. So for instance, I can see that Holden here has spent a little over an hour in the ebook. He's viewed six resources, made two annotations. He's got a grade of 70%. Gus has spent over almost three and a half hours in the book. He's viewed 120 resources made 36 annotations, and his grade is a 20%. Now again, that's the result of just going through and picking through answers very quickly to populate this graph. Our thought process is, though, that you as an instructor would be able to take from this information, glean from it, and figure out which students may need some additional help, as well as which students that maybe are succeeding, as well as the students that aren't succeeding, and correspondingly the reasons why they're not succeeding. Now, if we scroll up here within class engagement and I click on one of these, it's going to take a couple of seconds, and this will load specifically the student engagement comparison. So this is going to show us how the individual students are performing against a particular chapter. So while we wait for that to load, I'm going to actually just pop back over here into the gradebook and show you how you as an instructor have the ability to view the remediation of your individual students or the class as a whole. So here I'm going to click on the Chapter 2 eBook quiz, because this is the one that my students have actually accessed. And here I can see that my, uh, there's been three students who attempted, the number of students passed is one, two failed, average score of 40%, or basically a 41.38. Scroll down here, and I'm going to actually see the type of questions. So there were two easy questions and eight moderate questions. The questions are tagged for complexity. And it looks like uh, none of the students did well on the two easy questions. We did a little better, actually, on the moderate questions. The subject metadata is defining where in the chapter those particular questions were gleaned for that particular book. And you can see this at an individual student level or the class as a whole. I'm going to jump back into our student engagement comparison. I'm going to point out here, again, the most recent 30 days, we can see that, and we're looking at chapter one right now, Gus is the only one who's done anything. He's viewed eight, 18 resources, been in there a little over uh, 15 minutes. And then we're going to go up here to the chapter area. I'm going to go over to chapter two because I know that that's our biggest and most robust chapter, and we'll wait for that to populate as well. This is, again, going to show us by individual student, and you can see we have Colefield, Bueller, and Frank. We also have the student engagement comparison. We're currently looking at chapter one. Fring is the only one who's viewed anything, viewed any resources or pages, and has a grade. Uh, once in chapter two, we'll be able to see all the students displayed. Here we are. We can see again, Fring has viewed the most resources, the most annotations. Um, Bueller, not as many. Colefield actually has spent the most time in the ebook. Hasn't viewed as many resources or made as many annotations, but he has spent the most time in there. And now we're correspondingly seeing that the pages viewed by Colefield, resources viewed, and their grades. So you can also see pretty clearly here that viewing those resources in and of themselves, but not really spending a great deal of time in the ebook, you're basically flying through those. So it looks like this student was just clicking on the resources and not really spending the time actually watching them, thinking that would help them. It obviously didn't. They got a 30%. The same thing with Bueller here. He's actually supposedly going through these pages, but not really spending any time. So he's just flipping through the pages. Whereas we can see that while Caulfield has only been through 48 pages or viewed them 48 page, viewed 48 pages, he's done that over the course of an hour, and that looks to have worked pretty well for him. So we can see the student engagement. We can also see the most and least viewed resources. The chapter quiz is the highest. And then these are going to identify each of the actual videos that the student has actually viewed. And by that, I mean actually, pardon me, the student, the student body, the class as a whole, not an individual student, how many of the resources or which of the resources they've viewed. So the, view, the resource viewing section is specific to the class. So I'm going to jump back into our course, and we're going to return to the lessons pathway for one final thing that I do want to demonstrate to you, and that is what we refer to as our responsive design. If I restore or collapse the page down, I want you to watch the folder tabs for lessons, learning, and teaching tools pathway. They're going to change. They're going to change to banners because our tool uses what's referred to as a responsive design. So what I can do here is literally minimize the screen or start to wrap, and ultimately, 
all of the material relocates because the tool is literally responding to the size of your viewable screen. So if you've ever tried to access a website from your smartphone that doesn't use a responsive design, you know how that works. It's the full website just shrunk to fit the screen of your phone, not very intuitive or helpful. By utilizing a responsive design, we make it possible for everyone to access the content from whatever device they're actually utilizing. So I'm going to show you how easy it is also to add your own content directly into the course. I'm going to share from my desktop uh, just this uh, little folder or directory I have with some PowerPoints of my own. Obviously, as an instructor, you may have your own content and pieces you've been using for years. We wanted to make it very easy for you to add those to the course. And it can be accomplished with just a simple drag and drop. So we can move a PowerPoint of our own directly into the course. We can subsequently, I'm just going to close this, we can do the same thing with, I have a PDF here on my desktop I'm going to pull over. We can do the same thing with a Excel document or a Word document, whatever it is that you may have, your own, um, your own images, maybe you have some photographs or JPEGs that you want to include. That's how quickly and easily you can add content to the course, and you accomplish that simply with a drag and drop. Now, there is a file size limitation with the drag and drop. I want to be transparent about that. Um, if you bump into that, you can choose to upload that file using add a resource and just select file. There is also still a hard stop on the actual file size that we're able to accommodate. It's an absurd amount of information. I would tell you that if you're trying to add a particular file that's larger than our limitation, um, it might not be usable or really um, valuable for your students. But if you do really want to get one on there, you can give us a call. We can look at making adjustments to accommodate that for you. We're here to help. So whatever it else, whatever we can do to accommodate you as an instructor, we'll do our very best to do just that. Now, um, that being said, that's really the, the, the crux of the Navigate 2 tool in its entirety. Um, at a pretty high level, I went through pretty fast and <laughs> pretty high. So if you do have any questions or, or uh, things you'd like me to drill down even further, we can certainly open the phone lines or the chat line to allow you to do that right now and ask any questions, and I can hopefully answer those for you. There are no questions at this time. Okay. Thank you all for joining us today, and thank you, Rob, for that great demonstration. Um, if you'd like more information about the text, you can go to go.jblearning.com slash Seamus uh, on our website. From there, you can request a review copy online. Uh, you can take a look at that video I mentioned that just kind of gives an overview of the content of the book and uh, more sample videos. If you'd like to reach your uh, account manager, we have a tool online to help you do that at go.jblearning.com slash findarep, um, and it would be your health professions account manager, or you can call us at any time at 800-832-0034. Uh, we're really excited to have instructors take a look at this textbook and uh, navigate to package, and if there are any other questions, please feel free to contact us. So thanks again, everyone, for joining us, and we look forward to hearing your feedback on this great text in Navigate 2 package.